So many things have been written and said about me in the last three to four years that are so far from the truth, it beggars belief. And yet all the time, even all these years on, I still walk down the street and some people laugh at me or laugh at me and my children. And I don't mind people doing that, but they're not laughing at me for what I am. They're laughing at this guy who looks a bit like me, has got the same name apparently, that I keep reading about from time to time, but he's about as far from me as it's possible to be. That's the person they're laughing at, the image projected out, not the real person, which they don't know. And all in areas of this system, we are being encouraged, that's the mildest word I can use, to conform to certain ways of thinking. For instance, what are exams? Who sets the questions in exams? The status quo does. Who decides what the answers are going to be if we're going to pass those exams? The status quo does. And if we don't give the status quo what it wants to hear, we don't progress within it, which is a very powerful uh, encouragement to give the status quo what it wants to hear and perpetuate the myths into the next generation. It's what's going on in the education system all the time. I remember talking to a, a physics student at Cambridge University once, and he said, uh, you know, I, I've heard more sense tonight about physics and uh, the nature of life than I get from my lecturers, he said, but I can't say that in my exam because I'd fail. And another thing that kind of uh, struck home to me uh, when I spoke in, in America uh, a couple of years ago is how we allow our world and our values and how we judge each other and how we judge others and what we feel guilty about or not guilty about to be decided not by what we think is right but be decided often by what people sometimes thousands of years ago believed was right because we don't a ask the question why which is the most liberating question it's possible to ask and b have the courage and confidence to stand up and say well, I don't think we should be doing this. I don't care how long we've done it. It doesn't make sense to me. I'm going to do it another way. Um, last time I was in Liverpool, I told the story, but for those, those who weren't there that night, it's worth repeating of um, the lady in the audience when I spoke in Houston in Texas, who came up to me afterwards when I'd been talking about all this, and she said, um, you know, I've got a story, she said, that sums up what you're saying. She said, when I was, um, when I was first married, she said, I used to cut the corners off the ham before I put it in the pan and put it in the oven, you know. She said, and one day my husband came up to me and said, why do you do that? She said, I don't know, my mother used to do it. What's it matter, you know? So he said, well, why did your mother cut the corners off the ham before she put it in the pan? She said, I don't know, my, my mother, she just did it. What's it matter? He said, call your mother and ask why she cut the corners off the ham. So she calls her mother and... Uh, she said, Mom, you know, you know when I was a girl and you used to cut the corners off the ham, and why did you do that? My mother said, because my pan was never big enough. And if you kind of uh, look at the world in general from the perspective of that simple tale, you can see that so much that we accept as conventional wisdom is merely existing for the want of the word why and the courage to say, well, I'm going to do it another way. If we don't start to do that, then we are the mouse in the tube, thinking we are free while going on doing as we're told. And that will have great consequences for our children, to say the least. Before I come into the nature of this global effort to control the world, I just want to talk briefly about uh, where I'm coming from and what I term the knowledge that is being kept from us. Because there's loads of myths about me, crikey. I mean, there's a, I'm a myth maker extraordinaire, or people make them for me. Apparently, I think I'm the Messiah. Well, I wish I was, because it wouldn't have saved me ferry fares when I come from the Isle of Wight, you know. 
could walk across the Solent. I've apparently discovered religion. Which is really strange that I've written six books challenging the imposition of dogmatic religion and describing it as one of the greatest forms of mind control known to the human race. What I'm actually suggesting, and it's no more than what I believe and what increasing numbers of people believe, increasingly open-minded scientists too, challenges both the conventional views of who we are and what we're doing here. We're kind of offered the uh, choice of believing that there is some judgmental God saying you have sinned and you shall be punished and that after one life on this planet this guy judges whether we go to heaven or hell forever. The other alternative is that uh, offered by conventional this world is all there is science which says that we are basically a cosmic accident of evolution and we have no past, no future and basically as I saw on a t-shirt once life's a bitch and then you die. Doesn't really seem like much of a choice to me. There is an alternative to both which is increasingly emerging as the suppression is overcome, cast aside. And I'll just briefly sum up what that alternative is. It's that everything in creation is the same energy in different states of being. Uh, just as water, clouds and ice are the same substance in different states of being, so everything that exists is the same energy in different states of being. And energy is also consciousness. Some more enlightened, open-minded scientists are now suggesting, and have been for some time for instance, that it can be shown that water has a memory. Well, water as a memory seems to be crooked. That's crazy. It's water. How can it, how can it have a memory? But it can have a memory if energy is consciousness. Because therefore, everything has some kind of memory, some kind of retention of experience, whether it be a, a wall, water, the sky, ourselves, whatever. So if that is the case, then what we're looking at in this infinite creation is one gigantic mind and it's this mind, this one consciousness that is everything expressing itself through different forms that is the force that has become known as God or whatever name you'd like to call it, some people call it the infinite mind, it matters not. This God is not some guy with a beard sitting on a throne, handing out punishments for people who don't do as he says. And it's always a he, have you noticed that? It is the consciousness that is everything. And the way I see it, and increasing numbers of people see it, and indeed have done throughout human history, is that we are aspects of that whole. We, if you like, are like droplets of water in this ocean of consciousness. We're individual to a certain extent, but all together we make up the whole.
Thank you.